Why hello, welcome to Design Lab. Today I'm looking at this book by Frank Frazetta. I was thinking about Frank Frazetta really, who I really principally know for his illustrations on usually book covers, fantasy book covers. I, I associate him with the 60s and 70s, maybe the 80s too. Uh, but I guess he did comics too, and I, I don't think I've ever read his comics. So I was kind of thinking about him and like, what could I look at by Frank Frazetta? And when I came across his books, this one looked the least like what I think of as Frank Rosetta. I thought, this looks weird. I want to look at this. And uh, I didn't know anything about it. It came out in 2015. His son published it, I think, yeah, after his death. I think Frazetta died in 2010. Anyways, this book, I think it was mainly done in like 1944. And um, I, read, I read the introduction to it, but I have not read the book itself. So I thought I'd read it. It doesn't look very too dense. So I thought we could just read it all together in one sitting on this episode of Design Lab. So let's do it. I read the introduction is all I've read. <laughs> and all I read too was that um, it was kind of done in reaction to the bombing of Pearl Harbor. So there's, there may not be some politically, there may be some politi politically incorrect depictions of Asian people in this book. That's all I'm saying. Um, and also it said in the introduction that this came out before Frosty the Snowman, which uh, that song, I guess, came out in 1950, which I didn't know. I had no idea when that song was from. So anyways, Dark Horse published this. I'll, I don't know. I don't know what level of like, is this for adults or for kids? I'm guessing it's more for kids. But on the other hand, other hand he's like holding an axe. And I, I think of Frazetta as kind of like more, a little more adult, like cover of heavy metal magazine, things like that. Like, at least PG-13, but who knows, back in 1944. Oh, and also, I think Frazetta was only like 15 when he did this, so it's kind of impressive. Let's, let's see what it is. So The Adventures of the Snowman by F. Frazetta. And also, I, I noticed there's this um, copyright patent pending, because I guess he, he tried to get it copyrighted, registered or something. I don't know. Um, so I guess he was at least, you know, proud enough and inter interested enough of... Uh, and securing his, his ownership of it somewhere in the Rockies, all right? Um, I don't know where Frank Frazetta grew up. I, I just looked uh, and I saw that there is a Frank Frazetta Museum in Pennsylvania, so maybe maybe Pennsylvania? Who knows, though? Oh, gee, wait up, boss. Shut up. Now, it's interesting. There's no, like, we see a long shot of these guys, and then we see their backs, so we don't see their faces right away. It's an interesting choice. Hmm. <laughs> Snowman looks incredibly huge based on the the perspective here. Um, but he looks very, like, animated. Like, I wouldn't guess this was done by a 15-year-old. This is pretty impressive. I mean, look at all the, the details in the hair. Um, I don't know what medium exactly, is, if this is, like, watercolor or colored pencils. But it looks good. Actually, I would say maybe, like, markers and colored pencils. But I'm not sure. Hello, killer. Snowman. This is very, uh, very cryptic. Um, I don't know what's going on. And again, we don't see these guys' faces. All we see is long shots. Frazetta seems very fond of showing people from a distance and not showing their faces. But look at these. Uh, I mean, this hand is very impressive. This inking, very good. For a 15-year-old, I'm impressed. Um, and then somehow, or for some reason, the snowman attacks them. Not sure why. And um, he's a very violent snowman. Biff Bop, kind of Batman level. This looks like, almost like Mad Magazine type uh, image. And I guess, I just learned this. I guess Frank Rosetta kind of got some, uh, kind of got his first break when he, he did an image of Ringo Starr in Mad Magazine. And I guess some Hollywood people liked it enough and, and liked it and wanted to contact him. So... They hired him to do the poster for um, What's New Pussycat, and he made a ton of money on that poster, more than like more in one day than he made usually in his entire year. That's what Wikipedia told me, anyways. That's what you call the mopping up process. Tweet, tweet, tweet. Interesting. It's very yeah, like a animated cartoon, but it's like not very funny. I mean, it's very kind of grim and gritty. Snowman. <laughs> this is like if uh, Frank Miller. Took on the snowman character. 
Uh, and then all of a sudden we get this massive text, all these characters and these guys pointing, pointing a gun at these criminals <laughs> later. I'll see to it that, I don't know why there's a comma there. I'll see to it that they don't ever escape again, Snowman. Thanks again for bringing them back. It was a pleasure, Sarge, but I've got to go now. I was on the trail of the escaped Jap spies when I ran into these guys. Oh yeah, so definitely some, um, some kind of, <laughs> some, uh, anti-Japanese sentiment going on here. Um, I'm trying to remember, I think Dr. Seuss also has some, like, there's a lot of different things, like in the 1940s from, um, that now we'd probably consider racist, but at the time everybody just called Japanese people Japs and it was, it was very normal to depict them that way. And I'm not defending that. I'm just saying that that was like what everybody did back then. Uh, by now those spies have gained a good five miles, but it will only be a matter of time till I catch up with them. Ah, here's their footprints, the three of them. I hope they haven't committed Harry Carey. They, they have some vital information America can use. Oh, and these are the Japanese guys. Meanwhile, I'm not too far ahead. <laughs> I like how the font, it, it almost looks kind of, uh, it, it implies that they're not, that they're talking with an accent. Is Honorable Skull Mountain ahead? Soon we find food and shelter. Is good, is good. Skull is good, friend of Japanese. Evil eyes watch snowman's every move. Suddenly, bang. I don't, I, don't, I don't imagine, like, bullets hurting a snowman. I feel like they would just go right through. But, um... I don't know how long it took him to finish this. The end of the snowman. It did say at the beginning of the date, so maybe at the end it'll say the date. This looks almost like, uh... I don't know, this looks kind of like Mad Magazine-ish, too. Like, a lot of his style. I, I, I can almost imagine a different career for Frazetta. Because he seems like a really good cartoonist. And it's kind of, I'm not saying it's horrible, but that he, um, that he did posters and, you know, book covers instead, but it's, I don't know. There's always kind of something a little sad when you lose a cartoonist or a comic artist to just doing covers. Cause then it's just like, they're doing art, but it's like, if you're good at comics and cartooning, that's like a pretty unique skill set. And, uh, he is dead. Yidi Sung. Is good work, Hansing. This looks, I mean, this inking is incredible for a 15 year old. This is very impressive stuff. I think he, uh, what I read was that Hal Foster, who he did Prince Valiant, right? And uh, I think he did Tarzan as well. I think he was like kind of the idol of, of Frank Frazetta, his fam favorite artist. So um, he was very realistic in his art, not very cartoony. So this is kind of a mix of that. Beautiful colors here. Yeah, I'd say this is, it looks like some kind of, like, wa not watercolor, like uh, colored pencils, I'm guessing. Soon. See, there is Skull. He sees us and knows us. He will be glad to hear that Honorable Snowman is dead. I don't know why these guys hate Snowman so much. It is them. Oh, there's, this is getting very, uh, I mean, it was obviously already filled with fantasy elements with a talking snowman, but my loyal Japanese friends, I don't know, I assume he's misspelling friends. No, I guess he, I, I'm assuming that it's Frazetta who's misspelling friends and not, not, uh, not as like implying the, the pronunciation. They have escaped from the concentration camp. This is indeed good news. Um, it is good to see you, Honorable Skull. Together we shall give America much trouble. He, 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 he. Ah, my friends, this is an honor. Enter and we shall make great plans. Yes, great plans. It's kind of, I'm trying to figure out who the audience is for this. Like, is it, I don't know, maybe like, like teenage boys? I don't know. It seems, uh, doesn't, it seems a little too mature for, a little too scary and real world for like kids, but, I don't know, but the snowman element is kind of, oh yeah, snowman got killed. So he's lying, he's, he's moaning. Ooh, my head, it went through his head. It's, I thought it went through his stomach. That darn bullet just grazed my skull, ouch. So does this snowman have, have like bones? Is that, is that what, 
Seems to be the case. But I guess he's pretty immortal. Hours later, Skull Mountain, dead ahead, and these footprints head directly to it. I'm beginning to smell trouble. Of all the luck, darn it, it's starting to snow. I've got to hurry. Is, is that not like, it's not like Namor the Submariner where snow gives you superpowers? No, oh, a silent panel. Interesting. He seems very fond of showing people from the back, like the side of their head from the back. Seems to be a very, uh, these are nice panels though. Looks very much like an animated uh, movie almost. This could, this could be storyboards for an animated movie, but I don't see Disney 1944 doing this. This is one entrance the Skull doesn't know about. I hope I don't fall into any traps. He looks kind of Asian, though. I mean, <laughs> in this kind of stereotyped way. Um, seems to me I'm getting no place quickly. Wish I had a flashlight. Yipe. Oh, well, I knew it happened. Uh-oh. There's a, a panther, apparently. Um, this seems actually something that later... Frazetta would draw like panthers and t like tigers and lions and wolves. Seems very, I feel like I've seen those on his covers. Go ahead and jump. I'll slice you up like a salami. This, this, this panther seemed much more intimidating in the first page. Second page, he looks just like a little cat rat. Um, like apparently it jumps at him. It's kind of confusing. Gulp, I'm afraid I must leave you now. Gangway. <laughs> the way this cat is running looks looks so <laughs> kind of silly. It doesn't look like a full run. It looks like he's just like walking, but all this he's like barely even like if you didn't see this smoke, you you just think he's like strolling along, but then you see this mountain of dust behind him. What? How did he he went from the cave to suddenly being underwater? I'm not sure how that happened. Uh, okay. He's underwater, I guess the panther's gone. This looks pretty, this background, I mean, it looks like he put a lot of work into this. Yeah, this is very impressive for a 15 year old. And I've said that before. Suddenly, a blub. Maybe it's just like an excuse to draw different animals. He goes to different habitats. What do we do? Um, I guess this is how he shows violence without having to actually show violence. He, he first he goes to like an all shadow panel, and then he, he just shows bubbles under the water, and one of them survived, one of them didn't. Maybe I guess I'm lucky to get out of that one alive. And say, what's this? A ladder. This is good luck. Boy, there's no end to this climb. I don't know where I, I've I've kind of lost track of where he's going or. Why? <laughs> I don't, I don't understand this. Like I've, I've lost, uh, in some ways I feel like he's, he's, he's micro. Uh, this has come up in, in other comics that I've looked at recently, but like where you micro, uh, you show too many stages of, of what's happening rather than, you know, bigger cuts of more significance. Uh, it kind of makes sense in like a storyboard sense, but as a comic, I feel like it's, it's a little too pixelated. Um, we, we wanted to see the major cuts, like this is something happening. This is development, development. Um, the Skull's Kitchen, hmm, food. How did he get into the Skull's Kitchen? He's like, <laughs> I mean, was he even looking for the Skull? How did he, I'm not clear on this at all, but there's apparently something good cooking in the kitchen. Turkey, and everyone knows snowmen love turkeys. <laughs> Oh, someone's coming. Grab your axe. It's kind of like Thor meets Iceman. Um, he's got a little hat. Uh, gotta hide. Ah, I have it. The roast. You're going to hide in the... What? What about all the food? That's your favorite. <laughs> he throws it away. Should have eaten it really quick. And then there's this monster. Skull and Japanese friends will enjoy good turkey. Ugh. So this time he smell, spells friends right. Uh, so maybe it's just his way of showing that Japanese people pronounce friends, friends or something. Uh, the other spelling. I don't know what this guy is. He's like, uh, 
He looks like something out of the in Star Wars. Those those kind of pig guards in Jabba's palace, with a touch of Doctor Seuss to it. When comes honorable turkey, Skull? <laughs> Why does he say it like that? When comes honorable turkey, Skull? Ah, here it comes now. By the way, gentlemen, I want to make a toast. A toast to turkeys. To a brave and chivalrous enemy, the snowman. He fought for what he fought right, but of course he was wrong. The Germans and Japanese shall rule the world. The snowman is dead. Victory for us is inevitable. He is good. He's kind of like the, the red, what's his name? The Red Skull in Captain America comics. And that would have been a few years before this. So I'm guess, guessing that uh, Frazetta saw those comics too. Now, gentlemen, let us enjoy the turkey. Surprise, surprise. It's not turkey. Turkey's in the trash. Oof, uh, boom, bam, crash. Very Batman. Kill him, kill him. His ghost of snowman. I. Is he actually going to use his axe to chop, chop this guy's arms off? What do you guys think? No, he, he carries the axe, but he doesn't use it. Contact. Boom. Violence. And now, skull. N now, wait, snowman. L -l Let's make a deal. N no, don't kill me. Please, please. Thud. What? How did... He just falls through the wall? How, how did that happen? I'm not clear what happened. Splat. This is a bit confusing. And then much later, keep a step, fellas. After all, I don't want you guys to overwork yourselves. One, two, three, hep. One, two, three, hep. The end. That is a weird ending. So 1944. So this all he did this all in one year. I don't, I don't remember when he started it. October. Let's see. Uh, eight August. So August, September, about two months. Not bad. Pretty impressive for two months. <laughs> I feel like in the end he's like, I don't know what's gonna happen. So just uh, he, what happens here? Like he throws the axe. The axe hits the wall. The guy is shaking and breathing sweat. And then he falls through the wall and Snowman puffs his pipe and splat. He's punching him. And then they're, I don't, it's a <laughs> very confusing ending. All right. But apparently Snowman made them his, his reindeer slaves and they lived happily ever after. Um, oh, and I guess this is the copyright form that Frazetta registered uh oh he grew up in uh, he was living in new york i guess snowman a cartoon 1942 wait 1942 so is the character copyrighted because i i guess he copyrighted the character oh that's interesting um, cause that's before this, this actual 1944, this is two years earlier when he, I guess he conceived of the character. Um, we have some footprints. These are some other sketches, I guess. And I guess that's it. So here's what it says. Informed by World War II propaganda, Frazetta's earliest work is nevertheless an artistically nuanced and socially complex as it is innocent. I don't know if it's socially complex. It's just basically... Um, you know, Japanese people are bad <laughs> and we're going to win the war. Now, for the first time ever, witness the first complete story from a modern master with Frank Rosetta's The Adventures of the Snowman. And that's a wrap. The Adventures of the Snowman. Well, I would say it was okay. It wasn't, I don't think it's like life changing or it's totally, uh, I think it's just more like interesting to see how different it is from later Frazetta, which was predominantly, you know, I think of Frazetta as like some big warrior guy on the cover holding a sword, uh, maybe some uh, chick in a loincloth at his ankle and like fire volcanoes in the background and maybe some demon or wolves in the foreground. Uh, this is very different from that, but it's interesting to see his early artistic development. So uh, what do you think? Let me know in the comments and see you in the next Design Lab.